All right, guys, so in today's video, I wanted to have a little one to one talk with you guys, just kind of on the general vibe and what we think the series is going to develop in into the near future. Because let me tell you something, right? Xenoblade 3 Future Redeemed was certainly not, you know, the end of the series as we know it. Of course, there's going to be more. So that begs the question what will come next in this series? And I see probably around four pathways as to where I think the series will go and what Monolith will do next. Not just as far as Xenoblade goes, but as far as, you know, what they will make next. I see four general pathways as to what could happen next. And I think all of them have very different, you could say, futures involved because there are a lot of different paths that Monolith can go after Future Redeemed and what their next project will be. All right, guys, before we jump into today's video, I want to share something that I've been working on for a while. I've mentioned this before, but uh, I've been working on these Xeno series trading cards. I have a few of them here right in front of me. Um, I'm releasing all sorts of kinds and different characters from the series um, on my website. You can click the link down in the description. I'm making these for fun, but I'm also just making them because, you know, I've always wanted something like this to exist. And in fact, I've already received several reviews for these things. And so here's one of them. Um, this person named themselves after Pyra. And they said, the cards are very pretty, durable, and overall high quality. You can tell a lot of work went into the creation of these cards and they have lots of detail, highly recommend. So these are reviews I'm already getting on these things. And so the cards that you see right in front of you are just a few of the cards that I have made. Again, click the link in the description to go check them out on my little website and I'll see you on the other side. So despite that, let's jump in into today's video. So I see four general pathways I think Monolith is going to take the series going into 2025 and beyond and the whole Switch 2 debacle. Number one, so there's the obvious candidate, right? Xenoblade 4. I think Xenoblade 4 is probably the one that's going to happen, at least is the most likely, because if you look at the end of Future Redeemed and you look at that whole ending and just the general message the creators and Takahashi and Monolith wanted to convey was that they communicated clearly, at least in interviews, that players will be able to ascertain or sort of extrapolate where they think the series will go because Monolith said themselves they do think they dropped enough hints as to where the series will go next. And what that tells me is I think their next game is probably going to be Xenoblade 4 or at least one of the next games. I don't think Xenoblade 4 specifically will be their next release, but I do think Xenoblade 4 of course is going to happen. Um, and I think if it's going to happen, I think it's going to be relatively for the most part disconnected from the main Klaus story arc because that already concluded, right? You know, the Klaus Saga was the first three games. And so the fourth one, presumably, if it's going to happen, which it most certainly will, will probably <laughs> be its own story arc. Now, will pass elements from the Klaus Saga carryover? More than likely, because, you know, you're not just going to discount uh, over 10 years of character development and storytelling um, and just completely wipe it off the map for the fourth game. I think there will be potential elements plot points and just maybe even characters that come back in a potential Xenoblade 4. I just don't think it's going to be directly correlated to Klaus and that whole storyline. Um, there's, there's going to be a new arc, whatever it's called. Maybe they do the freaking Galea saga for all we know, right? I mean, she's been pretty much non-existent for most of that trilogy. So, you know, maybe that'll happen. But in all seriousness, you know, I think Xenoblade 4, of course, this is a possibility that is most likely going to happen that is on the map. I just think it's going in a potential Xenoblade 4. I just don't think it's going to be directly correlated to Klaus and that whole storyline. Um, there's, there's going to be a new arc, whatever it's called. Maybe they do the freaking Galea saga for all we know. <laughs> I think whatever the next game in the Xenoblade saga is, or series, whatever you want to call it, is going to be very different. I think we're going to have different art styles, a different artist, you know, no Saito anymore, new composers. I think it's going to be pretty different but it will still probably maintain that Takahashi style, you know. Uh, as for my personal wants, I want it to bring back what made the past games great, but I want entirely new things. You know, I want new ideas, new types of characters, new races of characters, you know, new Xenoblades, new types of just newness, right? New areas that we haven't seen before, 
that aren't just spins on past areas. And I think Takahashi shares that sentiment because if you take into account the end of Future Redeemed and just generally the Xenoblade 3 ending as a whole, you can tell that staying in the present and staying in the now all the time is not good for you. So you should learn how to move on. And I think Takahashi and the company at Monolith Soft understand that as well. So of course Xenoblade 4 is one of the possibilities uh, that Monolith is looking into and is probably making as we speak, but we need to delve into the other possibilities and the other games that may happen. So, another one that's been spinning around is a Xenoblade X port or remake or a potential sequel. Now, I think the most likely of these three possibilities of the next game is just a Xenoblade X port, and I think, honestly, the Xenoblade X port, if this happens, is probably going to be sometime in 2025 for the Switch 2, and not only that, I don't think this remake, or <laughs> remake, quote-unquote, is going to be on the likes of a Xenoblade Definitive Edition. I think if there's any improvements, I think the visuals will largely remain the same, because I think Xenoblade X is still a very great-looking game, even for today's standards. Hell, I think it, e it even looks better than Xenoblade 2 and 3 in some aspects. But I think Xenoblade X, if this is going to return in any capacity, it's just going to be a port. I don't think it's going to be anything crazy. I just finished this game recently. I booted it up on my... <clears throat> it, it was a great time, you know, and I would look forward to a port with renewed graphics and some new content. But do I really think Monolith is going to go the extra mile for that? The answer is probably not. I think the most we're going to get is a Xenoblade X Definitive Edition, and it's just going to refine some things, bring back the online element that was present in the original Wii U version, thank god, because that was awesome, and I think it's just going to be a pretty minimal port, all things considered, and I don't think it's going to add anything too substantial if this is going to happen. Now, do I think it's going to happen? I actually think it will, to some degree, but I don't think it's going to be a huge deal. They're not going to add too much. Um, and this is a game that Takahashi even himself has expressed desire to return back to in some capacity. And I think, you know, this is a game that deserves a second chance because it was stuck on a console that virtually died on release. Now, as far as a Xenoblade X sequel or anything, as someone who just recently completed the game for the first time, I'm not sure if I would want that, honestly. Uh, the story was intriguing, it had great ideas, but uh, the ending didn't really leave anything that I'd want to see more of, necessarily. Uh, Lao, while a good character, I'm not necessarily interested in seeing that character come back as like a villain again. I, I, I'm just not terribly interested in that idea. Now, I do like the other characters, I loved the main, or you know, I liked the main cast of that game a fair amount, but I don't know if I share a strong desire to return to that world and see what happened afterwards. I don't even know what they would do in a Xenoblade X2, but I would like to see a return to Mira in some form of just, you know, remaking the original. I don't think it's going to happen because, you know, the game didn't really sell that well, but of course you could kind of blame that for being a Wii U game. But yeah, I don't think an X2 is going to happen. If anything, it's probably just going to be a port on the Switch 2 or something like that. Another possibility is Monolith just completely ditches the Xenoblade IP entirely and just makes a new IP. I know people have been discussing this, this has been something that's been circulating online for quite some time now. Hell, even back uh, to 2017 or so, when that concept art of that girl with the sword and the vista in the background was circulating on their website, and everyone has been talking about that since then. And look, I'm gonna tell you something, I think this is a red herring. I don't think Monolith is working on a new IP. Uh, this is probably the worst time for them to do so. I mean, Xenoblade is growing at a pretty fast rate, even though Xenoblade 3 is kind of stagnating as far as sales goes, we haven't really gotten many updates on that. You know, I think this isn't really a good time for Monolith to be making a new IP. I think they need to hone in on what they've been doing, and that is more Xenoblade, you know? Uh, the series has been growing a fair amount over time, over the course of Xenoblade 2 and 3, but I think they just need to capitalize and hone in most of their resources on that, because I think a new IP would just probably not be good as far as a financial decision goes it'll be a bit risky and i think also nintendo you know since they are financially minded they're probably not going to want to try to get a new ip uh out on a new system let alone for monolith which is one of their more smaller developers when it comes to what games they make and which is xenoblade because xenoblade isn't their highest selling <laughs> franchise by any means and so if you also account for nintendo being rather stingy or not making new ips for the last 10 years the last big ip nintendo really made that was new was splatoon in 2015 for the wii u and ever since then 
what have we gotten since then? ARMS? So Nintendo is kind of a stranger to making new IPs right now. They're more uh, persistent on making sequels to existing IPs and hell, even bringing back old ones, but they're definitely not making new ones right now. And so if we're talking about a new IP for Monolith specifically, I think that is very unlikely. And I think as far as that image goes with the woman with the sword, I don't, I think that's for something else. I think that's honestly just concept art for the hell of concept art when it comes to Monolith, because whenever, you know, they're recruiting for a new RPG or a new, you know, game of any sort, they usually just have some random concept art that they make. And so I don't think it's for anything. We would have seen it by now, this potential game, because this has been an image on their website from 2017. And ever since it was taken down, we have seen nothing of it. So it's probably not anything. But you also have the Dark Horse, which is like other Xeno related media, which does not involve Monolith. And people have been discussing and rumors have been circulating of a potential Xeno Saga trilogy remake from Bandai. I think this is a bit more likely than some people actually understand because Bandai has been on their RPG remake train lately and you know when it comes to these anime-ish RPGs I don't think Xenosaga is too far from the equation when it comes to that I think that's pretty likely now when will it happen I don't know but honestly considering the end of future redeemed it's like hard to say because you know I mean Bandai and Nintendo have good relations right but uh you know when it comes to the ending of future redeemed it's like there might be a tie into Xenosaga and will there be, you know, a revival of that potential franchise to tie in with Xenoblade? I don't know. I would like to see it. I finished the Xenosaga trilogy quite recently, and I really, 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 really enjoyed it. I would like to see that, you know? You know, it, it's definitely a dark horse, and it's definitely, you know, a wild card when it comes to what's next for the Xeno series period. But I think it's something that's a bit more likely than most people realize. I mean, Bandai's been on their anime JRPG remake stuff for quite a bit, you know, look at that Tales remake, right? So I'm not necessarily saying I'm the most knowledgeable and that I know everything and what's going to happen, but you know, I, I do think this is a possibility. Those are the kind of four things that I see most likely happening when it comes to Xenoblade, Monolith, and the whole Xeno series as a whole. Let me know what you think is coming next and what you think the future of the series is. Remember guys to click the link in the description to check out those cards I made for you. They're really awesome. Once again, once this video is out, so if you're listening to this right now, I have a ton of new cards um, up on the site ready for you to look at and check out and even grab for yourself. So go check it out and I'll see you there. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.